Hi, I'm Jeff Potma, a Chief Medical Officer at Medtronic, and I'm with Didier Cheche today from Clinic Pasteur. Uh, we're really um, going to have a very animated session here over the next couple of minutes. Uh, Dr. Uh, Cheche is the a global co principal investigator for the SMART trial, a very important randomized trial that we're doing uh, to evaluate hemodynamics in patients with uh, small annuli. Didier, let me ask you, in this day and age of real world data, it, are, are randomized trials still important? Uh, that's a, a key question, uh, Jeff. And I do believe personally that we still uh, need a randomized trial because there are so many uh, subtleties concerning transcaptor heart valves. Uh, that uh, it could be difficult to capture them only through registries. We need head-to-head -head comparisons to see if there are potential advantages of one platform over the other ones for specific indications. So I would say yes, randomized trials are part of the knowledge, the academic knowledge that we acquire, and that's the way uh, to move forward. Well, well the SMART trial um, for the folks who are watching is going to be a randomized study, area less than 430, annular versus super annular devices. And kind of for one of the first time, we're gonna be looking at hemodynamics and most importantly, bioprosthetic valve dysfunction as the primary endpoint. What do you think about those endpoints and, and why are they important? I think that the 100% makes sense and that uh, make the, the trial extremely exciting because we, uh, we are moving towards uh, younger patients, lower risk patients, more active patients. And in this uh, patient population, achieving uh, optimal hemodynamics may be of paramount importance. Uh, so uh, we've seen from the surgical literature that patient prosthesis mismatch impacts exercise tolerance, valve durability, reintervention, and so on. And it may be the same thing with transcaptor out valves. That's why Comparing a supraannular uh, device with potentially larger EOAs, smaller gradients, lower uh, rates of PPM makes sense because we need to understand that if we want to target uh, younger and lower risk patients. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's you know it's really it, it's it's really a critical feature, and you know, it, by by selecting small annuli. We believe that by definition, we're going to do, uh, we're going to include about 80% of trial participants um, are going to be women. And, you know, you had some very, very keen insights into the Wind Tavern registry. We've got Roxana Moran as one of the uh, global uh, co PIs. Um, how, how do you think about us doing, what do you think about us doing dedicated trial in, in women now? I think, once again, it's going to answer some uh, issues raised by the, the WinTavi registry, because in that registry focusing on women, uh, patient prosthesis mismatch was more uh, frequent in patients uh, treated with a balloon expandable platform with small anally, and that is exactly the target of the SMART trial. We're going to understand how patients with small anally, most of the time women, uh, behave when they are treated with a balloon expandable and a set expandable, uh, expandable platform. Once again, it's about uh, understanding what's going on to be able to improve our daily practice because we need that. This is a patient uh, population at risk, more fragile anatomy. If we can really tailor the device that is going to provide the better hemodynamics with the less risk of complications, it makes sense. Uh, so we're going to complete and improve the understanding, the learnings from the wind Tavi registry, to my opinion. Great. No, that's great. And just one, one last question for you, um, Didier. Uh, you know, in, in the SMART trial, we're also going to do a separate randomization of, of TAB and surgical valve failures, again, comparing super annular and annular devices. Um, I guess we're going to do best practices for each valve. What, what are we going to learn from that specific component of randomization? I think it's, uh, it's crucial to enroll uh, failing bioprosthesis because when we talk about small anatomies, uh, these surgical aortic valves in almost 45% of the, uh, the, the patients, in 45% of the patients, the label size is below 21, so really small devices. So we don't really know if we, it's better to put a balloon expandable platform or a self-expanding platform. There are arguments towards a supraannular self-expanding platforms in terms of hemodynamics once again, but the value of uh, randomizing the patients in this specific group is to better understand what we can do in terms of procedural uh, steps uh, during the, the TAB implantation, particularly uh, fracturing and so on, 
When are we going to do it? Is it done safely? What are the, the recommendations that we may understand from the trial? And that's what I'm expecting from the, the smart trial in this uh, cohort of uh, surgical uh, bioprosthesis, understanding what is the best platform and what is the best technique to do to treat this uh, uh, risky population. Well, Didier, I, it's always wonderful to get your insights into this. Congratulations on the SMART trial. Um, I think it's going to be an Thank incredibly you. important trial. And I just really, I wish you and all, all your co-principal investigators and Howie Herman and yourself and, and Roxana and a really amazing steering committee, the best of luck with this trial. So thanks Thank for you. your time. Thank you very much, Jeff.